The whole football world was shocked with the news that Mino Raiola, one of the most influential football agents, passed away this week. So today, in memory of Mino, the Goal 24 team presents you a video about the most powerful football agents in the world. It is almost impossible to imagine modern football without agents. Many think that agents have lived their age and they only pocket as much money as they can from transfers. In reality, there is a lot of hard work behind each transfer. Agents work with players, get them better terms and do all kinds of tricks to close the deal or negotiate higher salary and fees. But some agents are so good at their job that they can influence not only their clients but also some clubs and even the media. Today we're going to present you a list of the most powerful agents for the moment. But before that, a small quiz. This agent has been in football for more than 40 years. It was him who initiated David Alaba's move to Real Madrid. Who is he? Kia Jurabchian This Iranian is one of the most hated football agents. Some clubs refuse to work with him. The thing is that Kia is very cunning and he can do everything to get as much money as he can out of every transfer. He started a fund through which he's been buying the rights to his own players. This causes clubs to lose money on players' transfers. For example, in 2007, Man United bought Carlos Tevez for 14 million euros, but West Ham received only 2 million. The rest went to Jurabchian's fund. Moreover, Kia doesn't have an agent's license, so he's not subject to FIFA's 10% limit. Jurabchian's transfers have two common features – large sums and large agent fees. He organized Robinho's move to Man City, the transfers of Marquinhos to PSG, Ramirez and Oscar to China and Coutinho to Barcelona. How much the agent has earned from these moves is a huge mystery. Jurabchian is rightfully called the king of the Brazilian market. He is responsible for all the major transfers of Brazilian players, especially to Shakhtar and Arsenal. It was Kia that brought all the top Brazilian players to Ukraine and in 2014 persuaded them that it was not safe there anymore and found options for them in top leagues. His most successful transfers were those of Alex Teixeira and Douglas Costa. Mircea Luchescu named Jurabchian a real mobster. The Gunners remember Kia thanks to the transfers of Willian, David Luiz and Cedric. Interestingly, the agent is a huge fan of Arsenal. What's more, he's played a big role in the appointment of Edu Gaspar as Arsenal's technical director and he pays the agent back by signing Jurabchian's clients. So don't be surprised if this summer Coutinho moves to Arsenal. Constantin Dumitrescu The Romanian agent is the most secretive man in modern football. There's very little information about him, though some media claim he's the richest agent in the world. In 2017 alone, Constantin earned more than 100 million euros. All we know about Dumitrescu is that he left Romania in the 80s and in 1994 he obtained a FIFA license. And that's it. The office of Dumitrescu's company, Mondial Sport Management, is registered in a small German town, Kolheim, on the territory of a Thai restaurant. In Romania, they know even less than that about Constantin, and in 25 years he's been interviewed just once. The agent announced that he's afraid of the Italian Mafia, that's why he avoids publicity. He's been repeatedly suspected of tax evasion and money laundry, but there's no proof of that even in football leagues, the WikiLeaks of football. Even the Getty Images photo agency doesn't have a single picture of Constantine. In 2017, Forbes tried to complete Dumitrescu's profile, but even they failed. I never faced such a thing. We have found almost no information on Mr. Dumitrescu. We tried to get in touch with him, but for outsiders, it's impossible. That's what editor-in-chief Steve Forbes said. However, Dumitrescu's list of clients include Cavani, Mertic, Conte, Varane, Giroud, Kondogbia. Apparently, you don't want to mess with this Romanian. Jonathan Barnett At the start of his career, Barnett drove an old Honda and parked it behind a corner not to scare away the client. He pretended as if he liked working. As he was unable to break through to the bigger football market, Barnett decided to buy 13-15 year old English youth internationals. It was both simple and genius. Jonathan became the agent of Loftus Cheek, Mount, James, Chilwell and Grealish. The latter brought Barnett a decent sum, as last summer Jack became the most expensive English player. But the agent's most famous client is of course Gareth Bale. Jonathan sold him to Real Madrid for 101 million euros, earning 16 million as a commission. Barnett's company, Stella, 
has branches in five different countries and 50 agents work for him. Jonathan has about 400 players that cost 1 billion 300 million euros together. In 2019, he was even awarded the title of the most powerful agent in the world by Forbes. Volker Struth Volker has earned his nickname, the German Lord. Almost all the best German footballers are Struth's clients. He is incredibly diplomatic, building warm relations with his clients and becoming friends with their parents and relatives. Among his clients are Royce, Kroos, Upamecano, Götze and Weigel. Volker thinks his best deal is Kroos's move to Real Madrid and his worst deal is Götze's transfer to Bayern. Yes, the agent received his fee and quite a decent one, but Mario failed in Munich. What's more, Struth criticized Pep Guardiola for leaving Götze on the bench. Guardiola has destroyed Götze. I'm surprised that no one in Bayern has realized that and defended Mario. But Mario didn't appreciate the agent's work and fired him, blaming him for his failed transfer. Well, now Götze performs for PSV and Struth is the fourth richest agent in the world. In 2018 only, he earned 40 million euros. Interestingly, Volker became so powerful in a very short time. He founded his agency only in 2007. Wagner Ribeiro The MJF agency is one of the largest and most influential in South America. The company belongs to big boss Juan Figa, but the agents are doing all the work. And the most prominent of them is Wagner Ribeiro. His main tactic is raising his client's price tags as high as possible, because as he says, there will always be a buyer. It was Ribeiro who played a key role in Robinho's transfer from Santos to Real Madrid for 30 million euros. Also, Ribeiro was first to pay attention to young Neymar. When the future PSG star was only 14, the agent sent him on a trial to Real Madrid. Santos sounded the alarm and blocked the transfer, reasoning that Neymar was underage. Actually, Santos knew they could sell the player later for bigger money. Wagner also knew that and he was spreading rumors about Neymar transferring to Real Madrid or Chelsea. Eventually, Ribeiro organized his client's move to Barcelona and later in cooperation with another agent, Pini Zahavi, he pulled off the record transfer to PSG. Besides, the agents did all their best so that the French club doesn't violate the financial fair play. Interestingly, Wagner was one of the first to lobby Neymar's return to Barca, to earn more money of course, and Zahavi supported him. Anyway, the agents received a good bonus when Neymar extended his PSG contract. Currently, Wagner is trying to bring Hulk back to Europe. Pini Zahavi The Israeli is the most experienced agent in football. He's been in the business for about 40 years. He knows all the club owners and his friends with Russian, Arab and Chinese billionaires. Pini started as a sports journalist, but once he helped a couple of Israeli players move to England and he realized that as an agent, he could earn way more. In the 90s, he became Ferguson's trustee playing off key deals for Man United. Pini's glory came with Ferdinand's transfer from Leeds to Man United for 46 million euros. And in 2005, Zahavi received the record agent fee in England, 3,640,000 pounds for Jakubu Ayak Benny's transfer from Portsmouth to Middlesbrough. Pini is so influential that he's been involved in non-standard deals. For example, he helped Abramovich purchase Chelsea and Guy Damak buying Portsmouth. It was him to bring De Bruyne to Chelsea and Lucas Moura to Tottenham. In France, many think that Zahavi stands behind the transfer of Ndombele to Tottenham. Zahavi's clients are the likes of Joao Moutinho, Carlos Tevez and Javier Mascherano. Zahavi even managed to pull off Marco Gruic's transfer to Liverpool, despite a quarrel with the player's father, who had even taken his son's passport away. Here's what Pini says about his job. I unite people. I have connections, because I have never let anyone down. I do my job honestly with no tricks. I'm being paid only when the deal goes through. But the problem is that Zahavi's deals are hard to follow. He always works through other agents and front companies. On the Balkans and Cyprus, the agent has developed a multi-tiered system through which he earns millions every year. Zahavi's last great transfer was Alaba's move from Bayern to Real Madrid as a free agent. What's great about it, you'd ask? Well, the agent managed to get a huge salary and a signing on fee for his client, at the same time earning commission that some say is around 10 million euros. Fali Ramadani 
Fadi Ramadani from Lyon Sports is being talked about not only thanks to brilliant transfers, but also because of recent problems with the law. Fadi is cooperating with Zahavi, dominating the Balkan market. Among Fadi's most expensive transfers are Chiesa to Juventus, Sané to Bayern, Rebic to Milan, Kostic to Eintracht and Jovic to Real Madrid. Also, Ramadani's clients are the likes of Koulibaly, Milenkovic, Pjanic and other famous players. At the same time, Fali uses quite weird schemes for his transfers using Apollon and Cyprus offshores. For instance, Apollon was signing players that never played for the club, but instead they were immediately sold to other clubs with an increased price. Football Leagues has identified at least seven Serbian and Romanian players that were sold by Apollon without having a single cap for the club. Jovic, for instance, moved to Apollon from Cervena Zvezda for 2 million euros and six days later moved to Benfica for 6 million 600,000 euros. It took Ramadani less than a week to increase the forward's price for 4 million euros. Fali was also a mediator in Neymar's move to PSG. The Spanish authorities accused Ramadani of money laundering. But it's very difficult to prove as the majority of the deals are signed by other people and front companies. However, the police have started an investigation, which is still ongoing. Meanwhile, Leon Sports Agency, based on Malta, is the third largest football agency in the world, according to Forbes. Georgia Mendes Mendes's nickname is King. And this tells a lot about the agent's achievement. His clients are Ronaldo, Di Maria, Falcao, Mourinho, Joao Felix and many other top players and coaches. Jorge is specialized in the Portuguese market and he's been doing it so long that many people equate his name with Portugal. Mendes' first success goes back to 2002 when he started cooperating with Luis Figo. Since then, almost all Portuguese players, as well as top foreigners at Porto, Benfica and Sporting, are clients of JustiFood. What is Jorge's secret? He builds good relations not only with the players, but with the club owners too. The agent literally becomes part of a club structure and not a single deal can be made without him. For instance, in the 2000s, more than 10 Portuguese players appeared in Dinamo Moscow. All of them were transferred by Mendes. The agent helped Russian businessman Ribo Lovlev to take Monaco to a new level. He sent Mourinho, Pepe, Ronaldo, Carvalho, Coentrao, James and Di Maria to Real Madrid. He found Chinese investors to save Valencia from bankruptcy. In the 2010s, Jorge responded to President Antonio Salvador's request and made Braga one of the strongest clubs in Portugal. The agent organized Diego Costa's move from Brazil to Braga and eight years later he sold the forward to Chelsea against his will. Mendes quietly included a release clause in his contract. If Diego refused to move, he would have paid a lot of money for that. Mendes was also involved in Wolverhampton's purchase by Chinese businessmen. You know what happened next? Wolves became a Portuguese colony. The most prominent of Georgia's latest transfers is Ruben Dias's move to Mon City for 68 million euros. Today, Mendes is not a classic agent. He deals only with elite clients and global deals. Back in 2014, Mendes became one of the first football agents to earn a billion on transfers. Mino Raiola The Dutch agent with Italian origins was the most controversial person in modern football. Some adored him and some hated him. Footballers loved Mino because he always got the best conditions for them and made clubs pay. A number of clubs were ignoring Raiola for a long time, refusing to work with him because of his greed and daring behavior. Ferguson fought the agent concerning Pogba's salary, and he even called Raiola a scumbag. Florentino Perez avoided Mino as he raised the players' price tags for Real Madrid. But Mino didn't care at all what people thought of him. He changed opinions about football agents. He showed the world that an agent is not a discreet person but someone who knows how to make money. Raiola's favorite method was putting pressure through transfer rumors and personal meetings. In contrast with diplomatic Mendes, Raiola was noisy and aggressive, as he could easily change his demands in the course of negotiations. He could leak it to the press that the negotiations failed because of the club, so that the owners offered even more money. He was a good psychologist and a real manipulator. But thanks to his stubbornness and knowledge of eight languages, Mino developed good relations with his customers. Mino managed to make Donnarumma Milan's capital and the highest paid player in the club. 
It was him to steal Pogba from Man United and in 2016 made him one of the most expensive players on the planet. Among his clans are the likes of Ibrahimovic, De Ligt, De Jong, Mkhitaryan, Verratti, Holland and several other top-class players. Despite his brutal image, Mino was very connected to his clients and deals with them personally. Raiola was so powerful that even after Ibrahimovic left Barcelona, the agent was receiving 10% of Zlatan's wage for several years. Before his death, Raiola started a real auction for one of the main stars of modern football, Erling Haaland. Mino wanted a hefty and long-term contract for his client, and according to the latest rumor, Man City was the team to offer the Norwegian the largest salary in the Premier League, £600,000 a week, more than Ronaldo himself. But the fate of the Norwegian is now unknown. Maybe Raiola's agency will finish his job and the shakes of Man City will get one of the main football stars. Or maybe Barcelona takes advantage of the situation as they couldn't afford to pay that much for Erling. What do you think? Where will the Norwegian be at the beginning of the next season? Lately, football agents have not only been earning huge money, but also have violated the law more and more often. Some loan the money through fake clubs, others don't pay taxes. That's why FIFA wants to decrease the agent's fee limit from 10 to 1%, so the rich agent's era can soon come to an end. Let us know in the comments which agent you like the most and why. We're so interested to know. See you soon.